Hi guys, this is Hannah from Hannah Maria Plans and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an in-depth review of my current bullet journal, which is the Almanac Notebook from their art collection. So keep on watching if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this notebook, pros, cons, whether or not I recommend it, if I think it's worth the price. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I've been using this journal for five months now. I started using it at the beginning of March in 2020, so I feel like I have a very good grasp of the features and I wanted to make sure to wait until I was really familiar with this notebook before doing a review because my thoughts and opinions often change over time compared to my first impressions. My journal is in A5 and has an orange vegan leather hardcover with these graphite-like scratch details and the pages are gilded with a silvery holographic material. Now, I personally like the look and feel of the cover, but if I'm completely honest, I don't absolutely love it. Although there are a number of different covers on the website in a range of colours, I would say at first impression that they are maybe slightly less aesthetic than other notebooks such as the Archer and Olive or Notebook Therapy lines. Of course covers are a really individual preference and my opinions may well be very different to your own. And a major plus point is that because they're vegan leather, you can just wipe them down so they're very easy to keep clean. Unfortunately, these journals only come in A5 at this point and I know there's a lot of you out there that prefer a larger notebook. These notebooks sell for €29, Euros, which is about £26 or $33. It's made with FSC certified paper, the glue is free from chemicals and it is 100% carbon neutral. Each journal is made by hand and I believe they ship worldwide. The notebook has a pen loop, an elastic closure, three bookmarks and two pockets, one in the front and one in the back. It also has the standard contact information area inside the front cover and a ready-made dot grid spacing page at the back, but it does not have a key or a dedicated pen test kind of spread. The pages are slightly off-white, they are slightly more cream than a piece of printer paper and are 160 GSM and uncoated. The texture of this paper feels relatively smooth to me, but on the website it states that the texture is rough, at least compared to their other collections. Do bear in mind that once you use a water-based medium on the journal that the texture of the paper does change slightly, but I'll talk about that later on. The pages have a 3.5mm dot grid in a medium to dark grey colour. I would say that these dots are darker than in other journals I've tried such as the Dingbat, Leuchtturm or Archer and Olive, however the company kindly sent me their latest version which is identical in every way apart from the shade of dots, which is now much lighter and comparable to the Archer and Olive. The smaller dot grid was definitely a change from the standard 5mm size. I initially found it a big adjustment, but with the help of my own grid spacing page, I got used to it after a couple of months, to the point where I don't really notice it at all now. Unsurprisingly, I find I have to write smaller to fit in the gaps, but as a result, I do fit more tasks or information on each page. The pages also don't have any page numbers, which could be a deal breaker for you, as if you really like to have them, you'd have to tediously write it all out. The A5 journals are 43 by 59 as far as the dot grid goes, or 15.3 by 22.1 centimeters, so it's actually slightly bigger than a standard A5. One thing that I have noticed is that depending on where you are in the journal, it won't necessarily lay flat. I will say that these journals are hand stitched, so on certain pages you can see the stitching very clearly. It's mainly between each booklet where you struggle to lay the journal flat more, and it also takes quite a bit of breaking in with the pages wanting to lift up when you're working, so I have been using a clip such as this one to help keep it open. I don't mind seeing the stitching at all, but I would prefer not to have to clip the journal to stay open where I want it because it makes it a bit harder to use. But to a certain extent, that's just what comes along with making a notebook that will hopefully stay together in the long term. 
which I have found with this notebook. I think it's very well made and it's held up really well to me. Other than where I managed to draw on the spine of the notebook, I haven't noticed any signs of wear at all after using it every single day for nearly five months now. So I definitely think I can say that the quality of this notebook is really up there. Now the journal that I am using has 156 pages, but this has just recently been updated to 172 pages. To compare this to other notebooks, the Leuch Term has 260 pages, and the Archer and Olive has 160 in its standard notebooks. Like I said, I completed five months in my previous notebook and I easily could have fit six months in there, but I really wanted to try to get back to setting up journals every six months in January and July, so I finished mine a little early. I think with the page increase, you could probably get seven or eight months into the journal, depending on how many pages you use each month. To give you an idea, I tend to use about 20 pages per month. Another reason for fewer pages is that these pages are so thick. They are 160 GSM, which I think is worth it. I prefer to have thicker pages that I can use watercolour on, so if you're not typically using mediums that might need a thicker page, and you prefer to have a journal that has more pages, then I would definitely recommend going with a lower GSM notebook. There's a lot of options out there for you, if that's what you'd like. Almanac notebooks have no claims on their website about ghosting or bleeding, but they do say that this art collection is made for watercolour, coloured pencils and water-based markers. So let's test that out by doing a thorough pen and paint test. I want to start out with pens, so I'm going to go through and test a bunch of fine liners and gel pens that I have on hand, like my Secura Microns, which are probably my most used fine liners. This paper doesn't feel coated and it absorbs ink really quickly, which means it doesn't smudge, which is perfect for me as an impatient bullet journaler. I really like using fine tipped gel pens such as the Muji in 0.5 in this notebook because they write so smoothly for day to day bullet journaling. I decided to test out a Sharpie permanent marker just to see the results. I never use permanent markers in my bullet journal but I kind of wanted to show how it reacted. I also wanted to show how the Uni Posca paint pen works because I have occasionally used these. I don't have a black one, but I do have a white one, which I am using alongside my Uniball Signo white gel pen, which is mainly what I use to correct mistakes. I think the gel pen is a better match to the paper because it has slightly warmer undertones. I also wanted to test out some coloured pens, starting out with a mild liner with both the bullet and highlighter tips. I don't often use markers in my journal, but I know I'm a bit of an anomaly in that respect, so I thought it would be important to show how they go down onto the paper. Also, the colours are pretty, and I like colours, so sue me. Along with the mild liners, I've used the Tombow dual brush pens, the Super Juicy Ecoline pens, a Faber-Castell brush pen, and a Karen Marker Deco Brush Pen. One thing that is worth noting is that when you use the Tombows on paper, you can actually blend them quite well, which I know is an issue with some other journals. Eventually, I did find that there was a little bit of pilling with the paper, um, rather than it just being quite a rough texture. But ultimately, I would say that if you're somebody that likes to use your Tombows for blending or drawing or writing, that this is actually a really good option for you when it comes to notebook paper. 
The final pen that I wanted to check out on here was my fountain pen, but I completely forgot. But I know quite a few people out there like to use them. I guess this is my biggest gripe about the paper overall. Any wet inks really spider out so you don't get a nice clean line. This isn't the end of the world for me because I mainly use gel or ballpoint pens when I'm writing from day to day, but I know some people would probably struggle. I'll show you the results of these in just a second, but before we do that, I want to do the paint test side because this is where the notebook really shines. So I'm going to be using watercolours from my custom watercolour palette that contains paint from Daniel Smith, M. Graham and Core, and because I've been using a lot of gouache recently, I wanted to demonstrate this on the page as well. I will say in advance that this paper holds up to watercolour really, really well, which is one of the things I like best about it. I have a lot of people commenting on my Instagram post asking if I get any bleed through or ghosting with paint, and you'll see for yourself soon enough, but spoiler alert, no I don't. I have flooded the page with water, painted layer upon layer, accidentally ripped the paper with tape, and then painted over it. And still nada, nothing, nope, okay, it's worth pointing out that this is not watercolour paper, it doesn't react in exactly the same way, however you can do some techniques such as wet in wet very successfully due to reasons that I have not yet worked out. This of course makes it really easy to blend colours like I'm doing here. Once I've painted over an area, the texture of the paper does seem to change and becomes a bit more rough. I've still been able to write over it once I have painted, but if I close my eyes and run my hands over the paper, it is noticeably different, which is something to note if you're a fan of smoother paper. Of course, the more water you use, the more you can expect some buckling or wrinkling of the page. Because this paper is so thick, it's not something that has impacted my ability to write on the page afterwards or use it as normal. Onto the gouache, which is a more opaque water-based paint. You tend to use less water than with watercolour to get this nice matte finish, so the page is less likely to buckle. It also sits on top of the page a lot more than watercolour does, so you end up getting a bit of texture from your gouache paintings, which I actually really like. The ways I thought it might be easiest to test out the paint was to have a number of different categories to actually test them in. So the first square, you can see it's wet paint on dry paper. And in the second square, I did the wet paint on dry paper again, but let it dry before adding another layer or two, just to see how the paper reacted to that. In the third square, I added a bit of water to the page, and then I dropped in the pigment of the watercolour or gouache to see how it spread out. Because on, say, paper like the Archer and Olive, when I did this, I found that it just instantly bled through and couldn't take the water at all. And in the final square, I wanted to just show a bit of a gradient, either between two different colours or just one colour fading into a kind of paler white. The other thing I really wanted to test out was my metallic Calero watercolours. I just wanted to see how metallic they might show up on their own in both one and two layers. And then the final thing I wanted to test out was just how much water and paint I could lay down in one spot 
for, I don't know, it was maybe five minutes or so, and then just seeing, once it was finally dry, what it was like at the end. I say I wanted to test it out, really, there was just this blank space at the bottom of the page that I wanted to fill in, and I was like, well, why not? What is the worst that can happen? And here you can see the results. As you can see, the Sharpie permanent marker bled through in some parts, and in others there's just a bit of ghosting, which is actually to be expected as this paper is not meant for alcohol-based markers. There is actually now an almanac line of notebooks that is made for alcohol markers, so if they are your preference, I recommend checking those out. I'm not sure if they're actually on the market yet or just a planned release, but they're definitely in the pipeline. None of the other pens ghosted or bled whatsoever. I really can't see anything on this side of the page. If I turn over the page for the watercolour, you literally can't see anything at all. If I run my fingers over the page, I can feel it's slightly more rough textured where the paint is on the other side, but that's where I'm really looking for any sign of anything at all. There is no perceptible buckling where the water is laid directly on the page. Over time, I have noticed that the watercolours dry to appear less vibrant than I would have expected them to compared to other watercolour papers I've used. This doesn't overly bother me, but I think it's important to be aware of. So on to my overall thoughts. I will say I have been really impressed with this almanac notebook. I didn't know what to expect going into using this journal, but I would say it has exceeded almost every expectation. I would definitely use an almanac notebook again as my personal bullet journal, and as you might have guessed, that is what I've chosen for my next journal. I would also recommend it, especially if you use your journal in a similar way to me. I think you would really, really like this notebook. I know the price is more expensive than some other bullet journal notebooks out there, but I would say the price is fair when you consider the quality of these notebooks. They are beautifully made. I would say that this paper is just magical, and I couldn't want anything more from my journal paper. If you're wondering whether this journal would be good for you, I think you need to ask yourself this. How do you personally use your notebook? And if you want more leeway and more time to play with paint or whatever medium of your choosing, then this notebook is a great choice. If you prefer markers that don't need to blend on the paper, then I'm honestly not sure you would find anything revolutionary here compared to other brands that are out there. As I said though, overall, I am really impressed with this notebook. I think it's really great. It holds up to a wide variety of mediums really well. I've linked this specific notebook in the description box, but they also have lots of different designs and types of notebooks for you to check out. I'm not affiliated with Almanac Notebook in any way, those are not affiliate links. I paid for this notebook and my previous notebook with my own money, and Raina was kind enough to send over an additional notebook free of charge for me to check out. So these are just my thoughts. I hope this was helpful, I hope I gave you all the information that you were looking for. If you have any further questions that I didn't answer, please leave them below in the comments and I'll be happy to go through and answer every single one as long as I know the answer. And with that, we are at the end of this video, so thank you so much for watching, I hope you're all doing well. Don't forget to like this video if you found it informative and helpful. These notebook reviews always take quite a bit of time and research to put together. So let me know with a like if you want me to continue to review notebooks as I get my hands on them. I'd like to thank you all for getting this far, and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye guys.